m and x be a closed subspace and well certainly proper closed subspace and x little x in big x set minus m so by theorem 5.8a or proposition or whatever there is some linear functional f on x such that f of x is non-zero and f restricted to m is zero so we want to prove that this is closed well we want to prove that m plus cx is closed and so we're going to take a sequence in here which converges and prove that it that the limit also is contained in there so let mn plus lambda n x be a sequence in m plus c x which converges to some element y which we right now all we know is that it's an x however claim that y is an m plus cx since f is continuous f of y is the limit of f of mn plus lambda nx and by linearity this is the limit as n goes to infinity of f of mn uh, plus the limit as n goes to infinity of lambda n f of x and then this is equal to well let's see your f restricted to m is zero and so this is a, so each f of mn is zero and so this limit this is a limit of a whole bunch of things in m well, I guess, I guess more importantly, M is closed. And so, um, ooh, hmm. Well, no, this is enough. We, all we need is a continuity of F. And so this limit, this is a limit of things which are zero. And this is this. And so all we are left with is this limit here. So, what does that mean? Well, f of x is just some positive constant. So, the limit as n goes to infinity of lambda n is equal to fy over fx, which I'm going to define to be lambda. So, what does that mean? This means lambda nx goes to lambda x, because lambda is precisely yeah so lambda is precisely no yes so limit of lambda n is this over this so the limit of lambda n x should this be f of x of x. Let's replace this. Hmm. Ooh, this could be a potential issue. Um. Right. Okay. So lambda. I. I feel like I was right when I was writing this up. So, let's see here, lambda n x. So, what does this literally go to? This literally goes to um, f of y over f of x times x. And is there anything we know about this? No, there's really not anything we know about this. So it's, so it's, it's, it really has to be the case that what we're looking for here is hmm. 
How about this? F of lambda nx goes to um, lambda n of fx, right? Because that's what this limit is. Right, so f of lambda nx goes to, you can bring the lambda out. This is going to be, so this goes to f of y. Oh, well, well wait, that's, that's not useful at all because that's just this. If you bring this lambda n inside, that, that's, it's literally this. Also, I wrote the same thing twice here. Also wrote the same thing twice in my notes. Okay, so there, there's obviously something going on here. What's going on? Here, let's... Okay, so we only need one of these. Oh, no, 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 no. Obviously, it's continued from the next line. Okay. And the other thing dropped out. Okay, so so let me let me just write down what I did in my notes, and s see if we can fix this later. So so we get sequence m n, which is just m n plus lambda n x minus lambda n x. The limit of this is um, this goes to the limit. Oh, that's a little sloppy. It goes to this limit. Um, really, I should put this, the limit of this equals the limit of this equals the limit of this, but whatever, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in too deep at this point. Minus the limit, as n goes to infinity, lambda and x. And then this should equal, was, okay, so the limit of this is by definition y, and the limit of lambda and x from the above here is y minus lambda x. But mn is contained in m, so y minus lambda x is in m since m is closed. Right, it's the limit of a sequence in m. So what does that tell us? So y is in m, so if y minus lambda x is an m, then y must belong to m plus c x. So hence, m plus c x is closed. Okay, so let's see. So now that everything else makes sense, let's see if we can somehow go back and make sense of this convergence. Um, lambda and x goes to lambda x. Uh, Oh, well, I mean, that's just, I just defined it that way. I just defined the limit of lambda n to be lambda, and so this holds. Um, and really, the only important thing that we use about lambda is that this is just some complex number. So there we go. Um, yeah, and, that, and that's it. So that's, so that's fine. That, that all works. So, so we're good. So let's do... B and hopefully we can fit down four lines. Let F be a finite dimensional subspace of X. Then F equals span of X1 through Xn for some elements x1 through xn in x by a simple induction argument on part a if x1 through xn are in x are linearly independent
then span from x1 through xn is just by definition 0 plus c times x1 plus all the way to c times xn. And this is closed by an induction argument on A. Basically, what you do is you have, okay, the singleton point 0 is obviously a closed subspace. So then 0 plus cx, or 0 plus cx1 is, clo is, is, um, is closed. And so then you use that as your m, and then you get 0 plus cx1 plus cx2 is closed, and you do induction, and you get this finite thing is closed. So, hence, f is closed. And there we go. Got a little tripped up in the middle, but we were able to work it out, and now we have done the problem.